Hi everyone, welcome to our Godly Playroom. We're here to tell a new story today. Are you ready to come in? Come on in, Miss Becky has a great story today. Hi everybody, come on in. Are you ready to join our circle? Take a seat amongst your friends, get settled in. We have a great story today. As you may remember, we have to do a couple of things before we get started on our story every week. So we're going to change the circle of the church. Your calendar, Miss Marty's going to help us do that. Hi, Miss Marty. Hi, Miss Becky. Remember, we're in our season of Pentecost, so we're going to move our calendar one more week. Look, oh, we're getting really close to Advent. That's so exciting. Thank you, Miss Marty. You are welcome. Also, last week, Ms. Marty reminded us that this is a sacred space. And one of the ways that we can tell this is a sacred space is by lighting our Christ candle. And you all can grab your Christ candle from your art boxes and turn that on and make your home a sacred space also. This reminds us that Jesus is with us during these lessons and in every moment of every day. So if you're ready, we're going to start telling this story. So pay attention to where I go to find this story so you will always know where to find it if you want to retell this story or revisit this story. So this story happens in the desert. So we've had a lot of stories that happen in the desert lately, so we have one more today. The desert bark box is over here underneath the circle of the church here. And this guy is really heavy. And I've got a few more things I need to get. And these are over here on the Old Testament shelves. And I need a basket to help with the story. So a lot of wonderful and important things happened to the people of God in the desert. And like we talked about, we cannot get the whole desert in this classroom. So this is just a little piece of the desert. This is the desert. It is a dangerous place. People do not go into the desert unless they have to. There is no water there, and without water we die. There is no food there. Without food, we die. When the wind blows, it changes the shape of the desert. People get lost. Some never come out. In the daytime, the sun is so hot that people must wear lots of clothes to protect themselves from the sun and from the blowing sand. The sand stings when it hits your skin. The sun scorches you by day. At night, it is cold. You need many clothes to keep you warm. The desert is a dangerous place. People only go there if they have to. The people of God went through the water into freedom. They were free, and Miriam led the dancing. Now that the people are free, they can go anywhere they want to go and do anything they want to do. Where will they go now? What is the best way? God loved the people so much that God showed them the 10 best ways to live. Sometimes these ways are called the 10 commandments. As the people traveled across the desert, they followed fire by night and smoke by day. They began to complain. Some even wanted to go back to Egypt. There was not enough food. There was not enough water. God helped Moses find food and water. Finally, they came to the great mountain. The people came close to the mountain, but they were afraid to touch it. Mount Sinai was covered with fire and smoke. Moses was the only one who had the courage to climb up into the fire and the smoke to meet God. 
When Moses was on top of the mountain, he came so close to God, and God came so close to him that he knew what God wanted him to do. God wanted him to write the 10 best ways to live on stones and bring them down the mountain to the people. God gave the 10 commandments to Moses. Moses gave them to the people and they gave them to us. Love God, love people, God loves us. Don't serve other gods. Make no idols to worship. Be serious when you say my name. Keep the Sabbath holy. Honor your mother and father. Don't kill. Don't break your marriage. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't even want what others have. I know these are all hard. God did not say that these are the 10 easy things to do. They are the 10 best ways to live, the 10 commandments. They are hard, perhaps even impossible, but we're supposed to try. They mark the best way, like stones that can show you the right path. Now, I wonder what part of this story you like the best. And I wonder which part of this story is the most important. I wonder where you see yourself in this story or what part of this story is about you. I wonder if we can take out parts of this story and still have the whole story. So now it's time for you to grab your art supply box and you can respond any way you'd like to about this story. You could maybe create your tablets with the 10 commandments or the 10 best ways to live or anything you'd like to do. You could build Mount Sinai. It's up to you, whatever you'd like to do. And then after you've created your art response, you can have a feast. And don't forget to thank God for everything you have, your family, your friends, these wonderful stories, and end by saying, Amen. So we'll see you next week, and thank you so much for coming this week. Bye, everybody. This little light